This is the third video in my Autolab video series and in this video we're going to look at building the domain controller and the ESXi servers in the Autolab environment. Um, in the previous videos we looked over configuring workstation to run Autolab and populating the build share and now we're going to take the next step into actually building out the VMs within the Autolab environment. We're going to start by building the domain controller. Uh, to start the domain controller build process, you first have to attach the Windows 2008 R2 ISO uh, to the CD of the DC machine within Autolab. Um, I just select the CD DVD and browse out to where you have the Windows 2008 uh, R2 eval CD and connect it. Ensure it's set to connect it power on and now the DC is ready to power on so we just power on the domain controller machine and if it asks you make sure you press any key to boot from the CD-ROM and then it will start booting into the Windows installation um, the DC uses an auto unattend.xml that is located on the floppy drive of the DC VM um, there's it is attached uh, when you import the machine into uh, Autolab into Workstation. Um, so the the auto unattend.xml is on here, and it will run the setup based on the information in that auto unattend.xml. So this the installation is completely automated. It's going to install Windows it's going to set up Active Directory then it's going to install the SQL Express because the DC also serves as the uh, database server for vCenter um, and then it's going to set up the Pixie environment to, that the ESXi servers use to, to boot off of and um, essentially get, get installed off of. So this takes a few minutes um, to run. It's going to run through the Windows installation and then it's going to set up the other components so I'm going to pause the video for now and come back once the installation has completed. The DC has finished building. Um, this took about 45 minutes on this machine. Um, through the rebuild process it reboots several times and you'll kind of know when things are finished because it will log in. Um, it will auto log in and you'll have this validate PowerShell shortcut on the desktop. If things do go wrong, there's a log file um, on the C drive that walks you through what you know what happened during the build and see if there's any errors um, in in the setup. Now, common errors uh, really are with the not having the right stuff on the the build share. Um, so if you didn't build out your build share correctly, um, you may find uh, issues within the um, within the build log here on the C drive. So, a cu just a couple of things in here. Um, we did not uh, when we built out the build share in the previous video. We did not include the 4.1, 5.0, or 5.1 um, installation files. We only did 5.5. Uh, so you may get some. Uh, just errors that requirements weren't met and that that's simply because we we didn't include them um, this lab is going to be built on 5.5 we're not looking um, at least at this point on doing any kind of upgrades or, or anything so once the DC is finished uh, you can validate the installation by running the val the validate PowerShell script um, on the desktop and you may see a few errors um, if you did not include uh, the earlier versions of ESXi and, and vCenter. Um, but basically is what you want to make he sure here is that everything is green. Um, and you'll see it's checked uh, Active Directory, it's checked the TFTP server and the Pixie Boot setup. Um, it's checked all the DNS that it configured automatically and then it'll tell you the build looks good and we'll move on to the next stage. 
So the next stage is installing uh, ESXi on the host. So we'll start with host one and to start the ESXi install we just power on the host. When it powers on, it'll receive a DHCP address, um, and then it will uh, Pixie boot and give you the uh, a menu. And since we're doing um, ESX55, I'm just going to do ESX.55 automated builds, and we're going to do host one the automated install. So if we we select host one from the menu and then it will go through and install and configure um, host one as host one. Um, it's going to it's going to automatically configure the root password, the the um, management IP address information all on host one. So again this is going to take a few minutes. I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back as soon as this host finishes. So the build of the first host is complete. This took about 10 minutes um, in this environment. Uh, and you'll see the DCUI is up and the IP address for the first host is configured. And we can also log in as root. And see that the management network has been configured just as you can see from the DCUI screen. The other thing that we can do is now log in from the the machine that we're running workstation on using the vSphere client. And I got that certificate error because I've used this um, same IP address for this host in a previous auto lab build uh, so it's just saying that the certificate didn't match what it had uh, for the IP address that we're heading you know do you want to replace it with the new one um, so there we are that first host is built and we're able to log into it so now we just repeat this this process of the build for host 2 and host 3 now you can run them all at the same time um, but it does slow things down considerably. I would suggest that you build the host one at a time. Again, they take about 10 minutes each to build, uh, so it's it's not that big of a deal. Um, this is host 2, so through the menu we're going to select the host 2 automated install. And again, it's going to go through this process of, of automatically building it. And then once this is complete, we'll build host 3. So now we've got host 1 and host 2 built. So they're built and they're configured through the automation scripts. We're going to start host 3. Now when I try to power on host 3 I get a warning about there's not enough physical memory available um, to power on the virtual machine. I can either reduce the, the memory of the virtual machine, which I don't want to do, or I, for now I can do nothing. So I'm going to do nothing and I'm actually going to adjust the memory settings in workstation. If you remember back in the first video of this series we reserved some memory for workstation to use. Now this reservation is going to depend on the amount of RAM you have in the PC you're running workstation. So what we could do here is increase the amount of memory that, reserving, that we're reserving for workstation or we can allow some virtual machine memory to be swapped. Because I want to make sure that I have some memory available to things outside of workstation, web browsers, the vSphere client, etc. I'm going to allow some virtual machine memory to be swapped. Now this is going to have a, a performance impact on the virtual machines running in workstation. Um, hopefully, especially if you're going to SSD, this should be kind of minor. Uh, it is, you know, SSDs, they're still slower than RAM, but they're faster than disk. So if you are swapping it out to the SSDs, then it, it shouldn't be terrible, but there is going to be a performance impact. This is just a trade-off that you kind of have to, to figure out what you want to do, whether you want to have uh, more memory reserved and less memory reserved for the OS or available to the OS outside of workstation or just, you know, based on your environment. 
Um, if you have less than 16 gig of RAM in your environment, you're almost going to have to do this to get Autolab to run. So anyway, we're going to make this adjustment to allow some virtual machine memory to be swapped. Hit OK. And now we should be able to power on host 3. And again, it's just like with the other host. It's going to get a DHCP address, and then it's going to pixie boot and to the menu, and we're going to do the automated build for host 3. So host 3 has finished installing, so now we have host 1, host 2, and host 3, all with ESXi 5.5 installed, um, and the base management configurations done. So in a little under two hours, we have the domain controller, which is providing the Active Directory infrastructure for the Autolab environment. It's also providing the, the database uh, for our vCenter server, and the Pixie boot environment for our ESXi host, and the three ESXi hosts that will be part of the Autolab environment. In the next video, we'll spin up the vCenter server and go through the different options for the automation install on that. Um, until then, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter at HerseyC or visit my blog at www.vhersey.com. Uh, look forward to the next video in the next week or so.